this is what we're talking about, about the financial cost mm. of making climate conscious choices is that it's a lot easier in the Western world to make some of those choices because our infrastructure is a lot stronger to support that. But in, in developing areas, the, the cost of being able to get like clean filtered water is astronomical. And there's the cost of buying a bottle of water, instant, cheap, safe. So it's about like, there, there's, that's why we talk about climate justice. And this is where we start to get into the activism stuff of it because it's not just about like, pick up some rubbish, feel a bit better. There is a huge climate injustice mm -hmm. that um, it is a lot easier for some people to make choices and they don't make those choices. Like we, like we're saying about corporations who develop these things, they've had the technology, but it's much easier and more profitable for them to remain making things that are wasteful or impactful. And harmful. And harmful, exactly. So we have to actively look about how we reduce stuff. And that's why we do this thing of breaking down into like personal, local, global. Sometimes being a responsible consumer means we need to look at how we're consuming and how we can reduce in every step along the way, which might be finding someone who's got an allotment and chatting to them about swapping vegetables. This is a personal solution, but it doesn't solve the whole thing. This is a local solution, but it doesn't solve the whole thing. This is a global solution and I'm not the one that's able to make it. Mm. It's a government, which is where we come into activism. We will be presenting a workshop on, are you even listening? Uh, an introduction to open dialogue for the community. Um, my background is a, a social anthropologist interested in social and cultural aspects of, of, of well-being, uh, of, of, of relational welfare. Um, and we'll be talking about how we can implement uh, open dialogue as a method to, to create community development so people can really listen to each other, uh, try to understand each other and, and collaborate to, to create a better community. So, uh, and this is early days, and so it'll be great to work something out together. And that can be a really good process for mm. different groups and communities really starting to listen to each other. Not on their own, you know, not one individual feeling like, oh my goodness, now I've got to speak for my whole neighbourhood. You know, you have actually got a group of people there. Hello, our names are Ellie, Alison and Hannah and we are some of the Street Law Volunteers studying law at BCP. We will be presenting a workshop for the Change Collective focusing on discrimination, empowering individuals by demystifying the law on the 26th of May. During this workshop, we will cover what discrimination actually is and the law dealing with this, as well as how discrimination may arise in schools, employment and in the provision of services, such as in restaurants and shops. Finally, we will consider discrimination in the form of hate crimes, how each type of discrimination can be reported, and the legal and social consequences that it has. We look forward to having this discussion with you and hearing your thoughts on the 26th. I, th I think it's really useful just to have this training um, more regularly in most workplaces and you know, spaces. <clears throat> I think... Um, when you have privilege it can be really easy to become um yeah blind to forms of discrimination and sort of to be to me <clears throat> excuse me made aware of of your own privileges maybe and how to tackle that when you see it so very useful to have the um these various laws in place because before if you made a complaint, you'd be told that you've got a chip on your shoulder. So now people are taking it more seriously and to realize how deeply disturbing it can be when someone's discriminated against or treated differently to what they expect. So it's good that we have these, um, these things in place to support people.
All young people are vulnerable. All of them don't really understand how to express their emotions. And so over the years I've gone in, I've gone into schools and I've done workshops and I'll read poems like this to get them to talk, to get them to share. And not it's not just the violence. The violence has a root, right? And what we want to do is we want to get to the root because the manifest, the, the violence is the manifestation of that. I've given you that time to write four lines based on we've all what we've all talked about right now, okay? We have no stand for the Imam, so we can stand as equal man, shoulder to shoulder, facing the same direction, praying to God with a heart full of microaggression. So this is about how in the mosque, the mosque is designed for equality, like everything is on the same level. The art is geometrical to push the idea of equality. There's no separate rooms. We have to pray together, shoulder to shoulder, to push the idea that we're all equals, but there's still separation in the mosque. Like people, like black people don't feel welcome in Arab mosques. They go to their own place. South Asian people do not like to mix with like Indian or Pakistani Muslims in the mosque. They pray together so I think there's something there that that has failed in the Muslim community. I met love when I was 17. Love was sweet, as typical as any other love. Love was kind and brought me lots to eat. Okay so um, a thousand thank you for all of you uh, showing up. Um, I hope you're all well. Today we're, we're definitely going to be talking about making films with a smartphone. Uh, um, so I filmed Portrait. Um, I was a tiny bit nervous, so my hand was shaking a bit. Um, so tell us why you made that choice. I, think I made that choice because I like to see movement. Even when I do the photography, I like to see things mid-flight or mid-whatever. Um, I did it portrait, so I sort of cut it up like this and sort of transitioned it in slowly. Oh, so I came into yeah. into frame, and then I just tried to speak quite slowly, sort of an emphasis on each word. So um um the challenge is uh, my my kings and queens is for you guys to produce a short piece. It can be a poem, it can be a spoken word piece. Um, I think if you are not in the world of spoken word it could just be you reading um it could be almost a mind piece if you like statues pushed in the sea the queen's picture taken down footballers taking the knee you certainly aren't doing this for me i don't even agree who am i Am I a product of my past and my family? Do I know what drives me? Yes, I am me. I am my passion. I might not have had a voice in the past. My voice was owned by fear and confusion. Now, my voice is my passion. Hear me shout, hear me speak. Listen to my voice and my stories. I have so much to tell you. I am more than my past, but my past is me. It is the collection of memories that forms my direction. Hear it loud and hear it proud. Hear my voice, hear my shout, because from today, it will be a sound you will not forget. Young, if you're experience, you're lacking perspective. If you're old, you have experience and it makes you reflective. Sometimes it's hard to see beyond our own perception and see the objective because we're either guided or blinded by our own subjective. If we view our views from other eyes, it might alter the way we see our own incentive. I feel like the views of the youth can be misconstrued with the stereotypes. When it comes to the elderly, they don't receive any media hype. Captain Tom showed that you can be old and bold. He gave us insight into what life was like before there was any media hype. Fresh eyes don't realize real life. They see life through new lenses. Some hope for stacks of cash and plenty of of Mercedes Benzes. They don't see places that lead them to traces of faces and memories.
They see cities for the first time, embarking on a journey, the first step on a mental incline, past the nose on a separate decline. The elderly, no fault of their own, either physical or mental. As we age, we go from one of many to feeling more and more alone. Life seems to be separated by generations. Experience is molded by culture that seems to divide us. But why can't these inconsistencies also unite us? Unite the aged and the adolescents. Create bonds stronger than time itself. For if we neglect the respect that they deserve, how can we respect ourselves? Oh, 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 o